Next, we're going to talk about the stability of conjugated dienes. In general, conjugation increases the stability of a molecule. The more conjugated a molecule is, the more stable it is. So if you have lots of conjugated double bonds, the molecule is very stable. We're going to talk throughout the chapter about why conjugation is related to stability. In this particular section, we don't get into the why, we just get into the experimental evidence that conjugation increases stability. And the way that we have been able to uh, demonstrate that conjugation is related to stability is by hydrogenating different types of alkenes and measuring the heat of the reaction. Um, we have done Uh, this type of analysis before comparing heats of hydrogenation, we probably did it in the in the alkene chapter last last quarter in 241, but I don't uh, I don't totally remember exactly what the context was. When you're comparing heats of hydrogenation as a way of trying to determine the stability of the molecule, you learned last quarter that it's crucial that the molecules have the same molecular formula. You um, the heat of hydrogenation or the heat of combustion or the heat of anything is going to be based in part on um, the, the stoichiometry of the reaction. So if you're hydrogenating a molecule, it's important that the molecule uh, that you're hydrogenating and comparing that they have the same type of number of carbon atoms, the same number of hydrogen atoms, the same number of double bonds and things like that. Otherwise, your data... Differences in your data can't really be attributed to anything. So, for example, if we look at this isolated diene, if we hydrogenate it, we're going to need two moles of H2. And if we hydrogenate this particular diene, it's going to hydrogenate down to uh, pentane. And it releases, it's exothermic, it releases 219.7 kilojoules per mole of diene. If we have a similar conjugated diene, two double bonds, five carbons, also requires two moles of hydrogen, it releases, when it hydrogenates down again to pentane, and when it hydrogenates down, it releases only 192 kilojoules per mole of diene. Since this particular hydrogenation process releases less energy, then this particular hydrogenation process, we know that this molecule was lower in energy to begin with than this molecule over here. Because of the two different types, because with the way we've set this up, they're both hydrogenating down to the exact same alkane. So we know that the energy in these two molecules is identical to each other. And any difference in the heat that's evolved over the course of this reaction is attributed only to the amount of energy associated with the initial alkane. It has nothing to do with any other factor because all the other variables are identical between the two reactions. So this evidence shows us that the conjugation of the double bond creates an added element of stability to the molecule that's not present when the double bonds are isolated. So one thing that you need to be able to do is look at a set of molecules and identify which of them, um, which is more stable. Or rank them in terms of their stability. When you're doing this type of ranking, you have to make sure that the molecules that you are all that you're comparing are all identical in terms of their molecular formula. Otherwise, 
it makes it really hard to make a good comparison. So here we have four molecules, and each one has one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms. And, uh, oh, actually, they don't all have the same molecular formula. That's okay. We'll do our best to compare them, but our comparison might be a little bit, a little bit wacky. Um, you know, because I've told you, that the more conjugation a molecule has, the more stable it has. So this molecule right here that has three conjugated double bonds is the most stable of all. The more conjugated double bonds a molecule has, the more stable it is. And this molecule, which has two um, conjugated double bonds, it's the second most stable. We haven't talked about this, but cumulated double bonds are very unstable. So this molecule, or any molecule with cumulated double bonds, is least stable. And this molecule with the isolated double bonds is, is um, next least stable. The last thing that we're going to talk about is the conformations of dienes, of conjugated dienes. At room temperature, a diene is free to rotate around the single bond that separates the, the two double bonds. So you can have this conformation, and it's totally free to rotate. It's actually an equilibrium process. Rotate around this double bond, or single bond, sorry, to give us this conformation right here. This particular position or conformation for this molecule is referred to as the S-cis conformation, and the other one is referred to as the S-trans conformation. I know that you can tell where the cis and the trans part comes from. I don't know where the letter S, what the letter S represents, but when the two dienes are cis-like, then we call it S-cis, and the letter S lets us know, it lets us distinguish between cis in an alkene and s Cis applies to alkene, and S cis, which applies to a conjugated diene. And in the S trans molecule, the molecule is trans-like in terms of the position of the two, al of the two um, alkenes. The S trans is the more stable of the two conformations, obviously because of sterics. which is why this process, which is an equilibrium process, definitely favors the S trans conformation. Although the molecule is okay to go into the S cis conformation, and towards the end of this chapter, we're going to see several reactions uh, which require the molecule to be able to put itself into the S cis conformation in order to react. You can practice these things with conceptual checkpoints 17.2 through 17.5. And for this section, your study questions are, how do you synthesize a diene? How is conjugation related to stability? And what is the difference between S-cis and S-trans?